Hi, fourth graders. For your listening comprehension today, you will be listening to the informational text, The Unbroken Code of the Navajo Code Talkers. During World War II, a small group of Navajo patriots used their native Navajo language as code to communicate secret messages to the Allied troops, thereby saving many lives. In this selection, you will hear facts and information about events that happened in the 1940s when our country was involved in World War II. As you listen, Try to figure out how the code worked and what features of the language make it so hard to figure out. In this text, you will hear a few words that you may be unfamiliar with. They are Marines, eavesdrop, cumbersome, allies, and pitch. Let's go over these words before starting our text. Marines are a group of soldiers trained for warfare on land and sea. If you eavesdrop on someone, you listen secretly to what they are saying. Something that is cumbersome is large and heavy and therefore difficult to carry, wear, or handle. If two or more groups of countries are allies, they support each other through a challenge, such as a war. The pitch of the sound is how low or high it is. Now let's read the unbroken code of the Navajo Code Talkers. World War II began in September 1939 when Germany, under the control of Adolf Hitler, invaded Poland. The United States entered the war on December 7, 1941, when Japan bombed the U.S. Navy in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. At this point, Japan had formed an alliance with Germany. It's August 7, 1942, in the middle of World War II, and a huge battle is unfolding on Guadalcanal Island in the Pacific Ocean. Hidden in the steamy jungle, two Japanese soldiers watch American Marines roll out wire from one battle patrol to the next. In the distance, gunfire rattles and bombs blast. When the Americans are gone, the soldiers creep out to tap into the newly laid communication line. Both understand English well and hope to eavesdrop on what the Americans are planning. The first Japanese soldier listens, and a look of surprise crosses his face. He hears a sing-song mumbling and some throaty gurgles and clicks. The second soldier also listens and recognizes that it isn't English. It's like nothing they've ever heard before. What do they hear? Two Navajo code talkers on their field telephones. The code talkers enabled Americans to communicate secretly and speedily in the heat of battle and were critical to winning the war in the Pacific. Their code was never broken by the Japanese. Why Navajo? The idea for using Navajo code talkers was suggested by the son of a missionary, Philip Johnston, who had grown up on the Navajo reservation. Johnston knew that Navajo was an unusual language that few people outside the tribe could understand, and he also knew how important it was for the Marines to be able to communicate quickly without using cumbersome decoding machines or code books that could fall into enemy hands. During World War I, Choctaw Indians had sent messages for the U.S. Army but Johnston knew that German soldiers had studied and learned many Indian languages since then, including Choctaw. The Germans, now allies with Japan, had not studied Navajo. Navajo is very different from English and very difficult to learn. For example, there are 37 different ways to pronounce the word for wind in Navajo. Just by saying this one word, and pitching your voice in slightly different ways, you can say that the wind is making you cold 
or warming you, or blowing away from you. But the difficulty of understanding Navajo made it perfect for keeping messages secret during war. And when Johnston took his idea to the Marines, they thought, yes, this could work. The Code The plan succeeded not only because no Japanese understood Navajo, but also because the Navajo talked in a special code. In Navajo, there is no word for dive bomber or for other military terms. So the code talkers gave bird names to airplanes and fish names to ships. For example, dive bombers became chicken hawks, guinea. Fighter planes, you were hummingbirds, dahi tihi. And a battleship was a whale, lotso. The code talkers called hand grenades potatoes, mimasi, and bombs were eggs, ayishi. This code was so secret and safe that other Navajo couldn't understand it unless they were specially trained. Once the Japanese hoped to crack the code by capturing a Navajo soldier, but because he was not a code talker, he could not translate the messages for them. A secret service. After the war, the work of the Navajo code talkers was kept secret in case the U.S. needed to call on them and their unbroken code again. Today, the bravery of the code talkers is well known, but the Navajo culture does not glorify war. When Navajo code talkers returned home from war and were asked what they had done, many simply said, I was a radio man. <laughs>